mean, you look at the current table right now, it yeah. shows you just how tight it is. But I, I don't know why, but it just seems to me that ten games to go, there's, there's something... It's a watershed moment. We're, we're down to single digits after the weekend, although Chelsea obviously got a game in hand. Is this a critical point? No, when you asked me the question uh, about Tottenham season at the beginning, if, it, if you asked me at the beginning of the season, if you asked me at Arsenal at the beginning of the season, that is a fantastic return mm. to finish fourth mm. on the back of what they've done in previous years. If the season was in tomorrow, that's a fantastic result. For the other two teams, Chelsea and Manchester United, certainly with Manchester United, with the money and the players, what they have, that would be a disaster. Now, Oli, we know, has picked them up and he's taking them on an unbelievable run forward. Now, they're the team I'm worried about. They're the ones chasing. This game tomorrow is absolutely huge. And it's North London derby. If Arsenal were to do the unthinkable and win that game, <laughs> then I believe Tottenham are in serious trouble. They need to be looking over their shoulder because they've got to go away to Man City. They've got to go away to Liverpool. I still think they do it. I honestly believe they will. They won't lose tomorrow. But it's going to go right to the wire and they have to keep right on their metal from now to the end of the season. But the other teams have still got a win as well. What would it give Arsenal, other than the three points in terms of their charge for top four, if they were able to beat Tottenham? Massive, massive boost, isn't it? You know, he's, you know, he's come under a lot of criticism, the manager, I think. You know, they went on a fantastic run at the start of the season. Uh, I don't know. I can't, can't remember, there were so many games they, they went unbeaten. But, you know, then there's been shades of boring, boring Arsenal at times, uh, defensive frailties. Mm -hmm. But they seem to have sorted that out. Aubameyang scoring, Lacazette scoring. Uh, they've got some good players in Ganduzi and Torreira has been a revelation. Ozil um, was outstanding again well, the other he, night. He was the other night, but okay. again, he's... It, it, if he's Arsenal's poster boy, I always think they have problems. You know, the money that he's on, the fact that he virtually picks and chooses the games when he feels fit enough to play, mm. turns up when he wants to, he's, he hasn't got the consistency, and that yeah. kind of, it, it spreads throughout, or it has in the yeah. past, spread throughout. Do you expect Emery to start with him after midweek against, I mean, midweek against Bournemouth, no. played well and scored, but do you expect him, well, to even be in the squad against Tottenham? Is he, he just not he his type be, of player for that not, type of not game? Not for this, Jeff, because he wants the high energy, he wants, it's a big pitch, and you could say, well, Ursel will be good on the big pitch because of his creativity, he can see the pass, etc, etc. But it's going to be tenacious in there. He, he needs battlers and you can't count mm. on Ozil for that. And I can't see him... He might be on the bench, I can't see him starting. When Mauricio takes that with the captain, takes his team sheet in, he does... I guarantee you, Mauricio Pochettino tomorrow, before that game, does not want to see Ozil's name on the team sheet. Why not? Because he's a threat. And he's a potential match winner. And I know he does it when he wants to do it, but you do not pay someone £350,000 a week, Jeff, because he can run around. There's they've got a lot of players who can just run around. They've got the Glenn Doozies, you've got the Tureras, you've got all these guys, El Nenis, Xhaka. They can't do what he can do. That is why, it's no coincidence why he's on three hundred and fifty grand a week. It's because he can play. He's got magic. He's got magic in his boots and he needs to do it on a big occasion. It's very difficult and I'm, I'm sticking up for him here because it's difficult when you go in for a game and then you're out for a game and then there's a manager fancy me and the confidence is not there. He needs confidence as well. Even though he's a World Cup winner, we know how excellent he can be. He is the difference between them being a top four team and not. Phil wouldn't play him, would you then? If, if, if I if was you're the Arsenal manager, I would, Emery. I would, but I think what Emery would look at, you look at the performance at the Emirates, he wasn't in the team and they played very, very well. I'm not sure he plays with Lagazette and uh, Aubameyang and Ozil. That was what he'd do. I think he starts with the two, two guys up front, the firepower, yeah. which really hurt Arsenal, uh, Tottenham in the reverse fixture. Will he play with Ozil tomorrow? I would probably, if I was betting, I would say no. But I would play him. OK. Um, again, you talk about Manchester United. Their form under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is just absolutely incredible. How impressive as well was it, after the injuries and the effort they put into the Liverpool game at the weekend, the win at Crystal Palace in midweek? Tough. Tough place, tough place, to, place to go. It has been magnificent for that club. Mm. And the players, and, and they're all buzzing, they're playing with a smile on their face. He's, um, yeah, yeah he, he's, a, he's a nap to get the job. But, 
when they announce it, it's going to be a mystery. But it's the guys who, who haven't been part of it, and, and he is, Romelu has been one of them guys. Mm. You know, Rashford's the number nine now. He's the one who's playing down the middle. He's the one that Ollie's hung his hat on. And he comes in and he shows that he's capable of doing it. Now, you couldn't ask any more from him from that crowd. performance. Fantastic. You yeah. have to give him a lot of credit for that because he could have down tools. He's a big name player. He can have his pick of teams in the Premier League or all over the world. But he wants to play for Manchester United and he's shown the manager that on that performance the other night. Do we think that Chelsea's troubles are behind them now? Does, did the win over Tottenham midweek, midweek convince you that there is enough unity there now to make a a proper charge for top four. It was a decent performance, wasn't it? I was, I was stunned at the energy levels that they showed after the hard game at the weekend, but they were, they were brilliant in that game. Pace, mm. power, speed, movement, they had it all. Um, <sighs> troubles, I still think there's an under, undercurrent there, you know, with managers certainly under fire. A couple of bad results, you know, and he's, he's really yeah. walking a fine line. Um, goalkeeper situation still needs to be resolved, I think. I think we've not heard the, the end of that either. But uh, I wouldn't say, Jeff, their troubles are over yet. But they've got the quality. They've got, they've got fantastic players. And when they're on it, they're a very hard team to, to beat, aren't they? You know, but it's getting that consistency, getting them all up for it. But don't you think the way he handled the Kepa situation, Sarri has shown who's in charge? Well, he had to. I think it was the decision he had to make. Um, he should have brought the goalkeeper off. He should have stood on the well, side. He tried. <laughs> I know, I know, Jeff. But he's, he's, he has to t tell Moss, who come to the side, the referee, he's coming off. Keep the board up. He's coming off and bring him off the field. He has to show who's the boss, and I think he did that in the week, and it worked out well for him. Caballero never had a shot to save. So does he bring him back this weekend against Fulham? I think he'd be wrong too. Because that sends out that sends out a real wrong. Right, but how, how long should the suspension be? Well, as long as he, as long as the goalkeeper does well, yeah. I think it's his shirt now, and it's up to, it's up to Kepa to, to take it off him, um, and that will as he puts Caballero under a lot of pressure because he knows the next mistake, and and Kepa comes back in. Um, for me, he's been patient. He's an experienced goalkeeper. He's earned the right to for the shirt now, uh, by default, um, and I would keep him in. OK, well, this is uh, the moment. Ten games to go, so we asked both Tim and Phil to look at the fixtures of the four contenders for the last two places. I think it's off. fair to say that Liverpool <laughs> and Manchester City are going to finish top four. Here's Tim's predictions. Having looked at their remaining games, this is how the table will end up. Uh, I suspect there'll be a few Arsenal fans, so there's no surprise you've put them down there. <laughs> Why are you not convinced that Arsenal can do it? No, not, conv not convinced. I think Arsenal have done fantastic to be in fourth position at the moment. It would, all, it would all be different, Jeff, on this result tomorrow. But I've got the, the result tomorrow to be a draw. I think that's okay. not a bad result for, for Arsenal, but I think that a win would be massive in it with the momentum take them into the games and it would probably make a mockery of my other predictions. But I just believe that they will draw tomorrow. I think it's a decent result, but I don't think it's enough to take them into the top four with the, with the fixtures they have remaining. And I just think Manchester United are coming like a train. Mm. Uh, I think they'll win more, more games than, than Arsenal will. And I think Chelsea had the quality to, to get it done. I think you, they were just ahead on goal difference. OK, let's have a look at Phil's. Uh, I think you were not too dissimilar. This is how you think you'll end up. Again, you've got them exactly the same, slightly different points wise. Tottenham consolidating third and Manchester United going like a train. Yeah, I think Man United are, are being fantastic. I, don't, I can't see them losing that form. You know, I can only see them getting stronger. I think the, the Hayeth contract talks as well, I, think, I expect that to be resolved mm. quickly, you know, give him what he wants. He's a top, top goalkeeper. Get that done, that will send a good message as well. And I just, just think they've got the momentum, they'll just keep going. How many points did you have Arsenal getting there? 74? Let me check uh, my maths. I did, yes. So 18 points from 30 because we're now on the end of... That's, that's a well, collapse. I can see, well, well, it could be, but, you know, you've got to look at the fixtures. That I agree with Tim. The draw at the weekend, they got Manchester United at home. I see that as a draw. I think they'll drop points at, at places like Everton and Leicester. I think Leicester under Brendan, once he gets his, his mm. stamp on them, they'll be hard to beat. Um, draw away at Watford I've got in there as well. That's going to be a difficult game for them. So, yeah, I can see in their remaining fixtures where they might struggle. 